um, she writes uh, quite a few things, including Wonder Woman. Yes. And um, let me get the exact name here, DC Superhero Girls. That is correct. Uh, with the DC Superhero Girls novels, is there a particular theme that you'd like to explore with, with the girls or ladies in the, in the novel? In DC Superhero Girls, it really was always about exploring female friendships. Um, so we have seven of the best uh, female characters in the DC Universe. We have Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Batgirl, Bumblebee, Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and Katana, who are our main characters. And we really get to explore them as high schoolers and what they were like you know, before they were full-fledged superheroes and still experimenting with their powers. And um, how do you see, uh, as the tension there, uh, you know, it's, it's primarily, like you said, about friendship, mm -hmm. but obviously there's some conflict uh, to the stories. Absolutely. Um, so what do you see as your main uh, thing that, that you want to display about, let's say, female friendship in terms of the stories you're writing? You know, we really always wanted to show girls as being aspirational and as the superheroes of their own stories. So it really was about... <laughs> All right. So it was always about taking these female characters and making sure that they were the protagonists and they were very active and that girls at home watching or reading the graphic novels could see themselves as the hero of their own stories. Yeah, I have uh, two daughters at home and uh, they watch the TV show. Yeah. And um, I do really like the way that, you know, they it kind of gets around the typical, you know, mean girl type of thing, you know? Absolutely. Um, uh, particularly, I like the, the arc um, surrounding the, the traditional, like, really, really bad uh, uh, villains that ended up, they ended up being, you know, welcomed in, you know? Right. And even Harley's kind of just a trickster character. She's not really exactly. too bad. Um, I, I saw this here, you have this A Woman of Action book coming out. Yes, so that is actually out October 21st, so very soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, so DC Woman of Action goes into the histories of a lot of the female characters. It's my first nonfiction book. Um, it's profiles of the characters, histories, um, their transformations throughout the ages. So we go from Wonder Woman in 1941, when she first appeared, to Wonder Woman to today. And we also have a lot of original, incredible art by a lot of amazing artists. That's awesome. And so with Wonder Woman in particular, that's a really great story. Um, how did you feel, you know, as you were doing research for, for the arc? I know in the past that she kind of comes out first as this very strong uh, character with a very interesting creator, uh -huh. but then ends up, you know, later she's kind of almost like a fashion model. She's kind of been really <laughs> <Yes>. almost <laughs> depowered exactly. to now, you know, in, in Rebirth and New 52, she's really re regained a lot of her identity. In a lot of ways, you see the same things happening in culture as you do within the comic books. So in the 1940s, Wonder Woman, like Lois Lane, really came out with this kind of Rosie the Riveter mentality. She was super strong. She was powerful. You know, we're on the back end of the suffragette movement, and she is right there ready to take action. She's really, you know, she has this incredible backstory right. of being from this island of Themyscira. And then with the 1950s, and we have the Comics Code Authority coming in, 1950s, 60s, she really just gets so far from those really powerful roots that she had. So like, uh, there's a storyline in the arc where Themyscira disappears, which means all of her powers disappear. She doesn't even have superpowers right. anymore. Um, she does become a fashion model for a while. Like, there's a series where she's a babysitter. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, her big power. Yeah. And it's really about her always, like, pining after Steve Trevor is the yeah. big theme in a lot of those stories. And then with the big feminist movement at the late 60s and early 70s, she really comes back in this extreme way. And one of the women... <laughs> And so, like in the 70s, she really starts to come back. Um, she's on the cover of Miss Magazine, which was actually at a time when in comics she wasn't that powerful, but she was really seen as this feminist icon by a lot of the active feminists at the time. And that pushed her at DC. Editor started thinking, wow, we have this incredible character. Let's right. do something more with her. And then she's reinstated into the Justice League, and she has this arc where she really proves herself as just as strong as Superman and Batman and all the other characters in the Justice League. So it's a really interesting story to get into Wonder Woman's past. Are, did you, were, are any of the newer characters, like, say, um, um, Batwoman, yes. um, any of those, did you, did you find that those have changed a lot or a lot less because they're newer? Have they still been 
you know, subject to different forces that are going on, either the Me Too movement or anything like that? Yeah, it's interesting with Batwoman. Um, so we think of her as a newer character. There was a character in the 1960s called right. Batwoman right. who was introduced kind of as this love interest and then she really fell away because right. she wasn't nearly as cool as Batgirl. <laughs> Um, but then she reemerges in the early 2000s as the Kate Kane character, and she's like this amazing, powerful woman. And we haven't seen as much as a transformation in her, just because you know it has only been about 15 years. Yeah. Um, but in the hands of creators like Marguerite Bennett, who's been doing just a great job on the Batwoman title, yeah. who really and used Batwoman in the bombshells, um, it's really interesting to see that character come through. If, if I can ask you one more question, as someone Absolutely. who's you know, you're, you're purposely writing these empowering books, you know, um, both, I, I think not just for, for female readers, also for male readers to Absolutely. see yeah. that women can be powerful and it's not emasculating or something intimidating or anything like that. Um, does either in Women of Action or any of your things, have you, have you tackled kind of the, how things changed after Gail Simone wrote Women in Fridges? Like, <laughs> has there been, you know, have you seen a lot of changes in terms of people using things like a death of a female character or rape or those type of things that yes they do happen but they're so cliche you know yeah we do talk about that a bit in the Gail Simone profile in DC Women of Action as just um, hopefully it's always changing for the better but that she was one of the first people who really called out like hey a lot of these female characters who were these incredible strong characters are kind of being used in these male storylines in ways that aren't really great for those characters so it's been really interesting to see. I think we are continually progressing towards a better point. Of course, we always have a ways to go. Sure. I think, um, you know, I always say with DC One of, of Action, it's great that we're at this point, but I really, I would love the point where you could just write any DC point book and it would be 50-50 split female and male um, because it was that great. Um, and we still aren't quite there, but we're getting a lot closer with how powerful our female characters and creators are. Excellent. Is there anything else that you want to share um, as a last point or anything? No, I don't think so. I'm on Twitter at ShayFontana.com and uh, ShayFontana on Instagram and Facebook and all the places because I have a unique name <laughs> and it's easy to find me. Very good. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Sarah.